Hey there, welcome back to Vermintide 2. I am taking a look at another of Sienna's staves. Today, I'm looking at the Flamestorm. This is essentially a flamethrower, and much like one of the Ironbreaker weapons. But this weapon is a damage over time, charged attack, close ranged weapon. So I'm going to see how it performs on the battlefield, and at the end of the video, I'll talk about how I felt it went and do a final review. So settle in for burning some rats. Actually, we'll start by burning some Northlanders. <laughs> so the basic attack is also a flamethrower. It's not that bolt of flame that a fair few of Sienna's weapons use. And I tested it against the dummies. The basic attack does more damage per hit, but the charge attack hits much, much more quickly. So overall, it will do a higher damage per second. Let's see if it can go through armor. Oh, I think he was dead before I hit him. One thing I can already tell you is that this weapon is not good against specials. It is extremely close range, so you won't be taking out any of the ranged specials. And it doesn't hit that hard, it just hits quickly and in a wide cone. But for specifically taking out a hook rat or something like that, it's not great. But in situations like this, when you're in a tight hallway with a horde of enemies coming at you, that is its perfect place. You don't even really have to look down the hallway, just keep that charge attack going. And it doesn't generate too much heat, which is a nice benefit. You can really charge this thing up and fire for a while, and you'll get a hell of a lot of hits in before you're looking at getting too hot. And it also seems like it has a pretty decent knockback. It will knock enemies over and stun them for a little bit. The charge attack easily gets through armor, and so does the basic attack. So you don't have to worry about bouncing off armor, you don't even need to switch to your melee weapon if you want to get through the armor. Though, because it does so little damage per hit, I might recommend that you do switch to a melee weapon anyway. But, that is always up to you, it depends how you play. And even that basic attack nicely flinches Storm Vermin, so you can actually stun lock Storm Vermin with this weapon. So this sorcerer has a storm going up, but I really can't do a damn thing to him without sprinting over. And he can just teleport away pretty much immediately. So yeah, definitely not a special killing weapon. And once again, this having no long range attack can be mitigated by teammates that do, or not playing a career that doesn't have a long ranged attack, like the Unchained. Ooh, some Plague Monks, let's see how it does against them. Doesn't flinch them worth a damn, okay, they can just charge right through that. Bloody hell. <laughs> yep, even the basic attack they can get right through, so... Doesn't do a damn thing against Berserkers, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> they would have done great in synchronized diving. So because the basic attack actually does more damage per hit than the charge attack, it's not a bad alternative to clearing enemies. It's just the charge attack really finds its place when you have a horde coming and it's that constant stream of enemies that you can just easily hold back. But if there are small groups, blast them away with the basic attack and you'll take them down pretty quickly. Oh my goodness, another double fire rat. Bloody hell, oh god, there's a rattling too. <laughs> okay then. Yeah, good thing about this, if you are close enough to specials, you can at least flinch them with it. And another benefit, with the charge attack, you can still move around with it, and it's not too slow as far as moving goes. So it gives you that slight edge of being able to reposition while you're using it. Will you just die? There we go. Wow, that basic attack has a pretty hefty knockdown. And another negative to this, like most charge weapons, if you're struck while you're using the charge attack, it will completely negate it, it will turn it off. So you can waste time and heat if that happens. 
But the good thing about this is that it's not too easy to pin down because the basic attack is pretty powerful and has such good knockdown on it. So you really can get through a horde just with that. And it can very easily push them back so your team can make ground. But if you want to let them come to you and just burn the living hell out of them, charge it up. Alright, we got an armored patrol coming in. Let's test it out against them. Oi, fellas. Jump over here. Alright, let's get some damage in there. Well, no kills, but certainly hit them a lot, and they're all taking damage over time now. Which is a personal favorite attribute of mine. But, you get that special at the back, and there's nothing I can do with this stuff. I gotta push through with my melee weapon. Alright, so overall, it gets through the armor, but it doesn't appear to actually do that much damage when it does get through. The flinching and knockback is good with it, but if you actually want to kill them quickly, you're probably better off just switching to a melee weapon. Oh, I just pushed him right off the edge, bloody hell. That's pretty useful. That is another advantage to this, is that like the conflagration staff, you can use the environment to your advantage. If there's a cliff or something like that, you can push enemies off. And that is a troll. Nice, we get to fight a boss. Now it doesn't seem to be doing a huge amount of damage. One good thing about this, especially against a troll, is that it does damage over time, so his healing is going to be reduced. Will you just die, please? Yeah, this is not a special killer. Alright, let's get back to that troll. Actually, let's get Carillion up if we can. You know, that's some bloody decent damage going on there. I wager some others were also hitting him. Oh, f Alright, someone please get me up, because I just got bloody vomited on. Yeah. Any time now, you could get me up. Any bloody time. Seriously guys, I'm actually gonna die. Krillian, please, 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 Barden. Alrighty then. And we're dead. Well, I am gonna call it there. That is an unfortunate end, but we saw quite a bit of the weapon. It did surprise me, I didn't think it would be as impactful as it was. I will say, however, it wasn't fun. It was really boring, vanilla mechanics. You just point the fire at them and let it go. That's really all it felt like. And the basic attack and charge attack are essentially the same thing. They have slightly different attributes. For the most part, there isn't a lot of variety. But the actual positive mechanics. It is very good at holding a horde back with the charge attack and the basic attack. With the basic attack, you can knock enemies down, so you can quite effectively push through a horde and actually make ground against them. With the charge attack, you can also still move, albeit at a slower pace, so you can once again push a horde back and make ground. That is a pretty huge benefit to prevent you from being pinned down. And if you're playing on Endless Horde mode, that's also another benefit that you can just keep making ground without really having to worry about taking too much damage in return. It does damage over time, so anyone you hit is going to get set on fire. More damage, it's always good. Against bosses, it seems to do good damage. The boss fight didn't go particularly well for me, but the charge attack did seem to really get a steady high amount of damage onto the boss. The biggest surprise in the positive area for this was its knockback and flinch ability. I didn't realize how effective it was at just knocking people on their asses or flinching even storm vermin. That is, I would probably say, the biggest benefit that I wasn't expecting. That you really do have good crowd control, not because you can hit so many at once, but because you can keep them down and not attacking you or your teammates. The negatives. There really aren't any glaring negatives about this weapon other than its lack of range. It is not effective at killing specials. A Blightstormer, a Rattling Gunner, a Globadier, if they're far away, you will have zero impact on them unless you charge at them. It's also 
not that good against armored enemies. It can hit through the armor with both attacks, but it won't hit very hard through it, so you're probably better off pulling out a melee weapon and doing charge attacks if it's not armor piercing. Overall, it was a very average weapon. Good at clearing hordes, good at crowd control and knocking enemies down, but given the other staff choices available, I don't think I'll ever pick it. Its advantages are shared by other staves, and overall those other staves are simply better and just more fun to play with, but that might depend on my style of gameplay. But that is the Flamestorm staff, a pretty basic staff, not bad for beginners, but you cap out on your impact pretty quickly. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing the Flamestorm staff in action, I hope you learned something about it, and Try it out at home, my run wasn't successful, but yours definitely can be. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching.